Lord's Day 42. The Eighth Commandment, of course, is, Thou shalt not steal. Lord's Day 42 asks, What doth God forbid in the Eighth Commandment? God forbids not only those thefts and robberies which are punishable by the magistrate, but he comprehends under the name of theft all wicked tricks and devices whereby we design to appropriate to ourselves the goods which belong to our neighbor, whether it be by force or under the appearance of right, as by unjust weights, L's, measures, fraudulent <coughs> merchandise, false coins, usury, or by any other way forbidden by God, as also all covetousness, all abuse and waste of his gifts. But what doth God require in this commandment? That I promote the advantage of my neighbour in every instance I can or may, and deal with him as I desire to be dealt with by others. Further also that I faithfully labour, so that I may be able to relieve the needy. Remember a few weeks ago, beloved, when we looked at the fifth commandment, we saw that all authority is God's. That he gives authority in various spheres to certain people, and that he invests people with authority in various ways. That a politician, for example, gains his political or civil authority by the vote in an election. Or a couple receive authority as parents by having a child. Well, it's similar with the Eighth Commandment. Only this time we're not speaking of authority, but of property. All property is God's, because he created all things, and he governs and upholds all things. And then, God gives property to people in various amounts. This one owns many acres and attractive and large buildings and has a great deal of money in the bank. And that one only owns the clothes on his back and the few coins which jingle in his pocket. God also providentially distributes property amongst people in various ways. You're familiar with these, but perhaps not this way of approaching it. Property, possessions, change hands through buying and selling, through work, through death and inheritance. <coughs> At death, the one who dies loses all the earthly things that he or she possesses. Then comes in inheritance, and another receives what was bequeathed him or her in the deceased person's will. So you see the analogy here, beloved, between the principles of the fifth commandment, but honouring those in authority, and the eighth commandment, thou shalt not steal, because in both God is sovereign over all things. All authority is God's, fifth commandment, and all property is God's, eighth commandment. God sovereignly distributes in various degrees and spheres authority through elections and promotion and marriage, fifth commandment. And God sovereignly distributes in various degrees and spheres property through business, dealings and inheritance and so forth. And just as the fifth commandment concerns the proper use of and response to authority, whether parents, church leaders, civil <coughs> rulers, whatever, so the eighth commandment concerns the proper use of property, possessions, the things which we and other people own. So we need to get straight then, this right at the start, of this exposition of the Eighth Commandment, if we're going to keep this divine precept. God 
owns everything. The whole universe and each individual thing in it. God determines who gets what. Your neighbor's car or spouse or your car or spouse. The wealth of one and the penury of another. And then God's word governs how the ownership of property is to be viewed and to be transferred. And all of this is presupposed in the 8th commandment, Thou shalt not steal. God owns all property and then there is the right of private property. That something doesn't belong to me, it belongs to you and I can't take it. And if I do that stealing because God has given you rights over that thing, private property. That's how the Christian must think and act regarding his own and others' possessions. God owns it. You say, well, that's Harry's house or that's someone else's bicycle, but fundamentally, God owns it. That's the hardest thing. That's the struggle for our faith, to keep thinking that. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the sea, and everything that dwells therein, as we're taught at the beginning of Psalm 24. Which means that everyone is to be a steward in God's name and on his behalf of all their possessions. And the Christian also understands that not only does God own everything, but he owns me. Because not only has God created me, not only does he give me life each moment of the day, not only does he govern me, and not only does he judge me, and will he judge me, but he has also redeemed me by the blood of Jesus Christ. And here we're back to the very first Lord's Day once again. I do not belong to myself, but to my faithful Saviour Jesus Christ, because he has bought me body and soul. He owns me. That's crucial. And so God says to all of us tonight, together and individually, I have redeemed you from the bondage of sin, to paraphrase the preface to the Ten Commandments, so that I own you, you too, as much as everything else, and more so than everything else, because I have redemptive rights over you. Now you must be grateful. And being grateful means, in this instance, you don't steal. And you don't steal in any shape or form. And stealing has an awful lot of shapes and forms, but you don't do any of them because you're thankful that you've been redeemed from sin and destruction. That's the point. That's the eighth commandment. We're going to consider, first of all, what it forbids. That's question and answer 110. And then, what it requires. Question and answer 111. The Eighth Commandment, what it forbids and what it requires. The first thing that our Heidelberg Catechism does in its treatment of what the Eighth Commandment forbids is to make the distinction between crimes and sins. Answer 110 starts, God forbids not only those thefts and robberies which are punishable by the magistrate, but he also comprehends under the idea of stealing all sorts of other things. Crimes against the Eighth Commandment are punishable by the civil magistrate. And then there are other sins against the Eighth Commandment which are not crimes punishable by the state. So all crimes are sins, assuming now that it's a proper law and it doesn't transgress God's laws. All crimes are sins. 